V8 in a Bronco. They said it would never happen or they said it was highly unlikely uh, back in 2020 and that's Ford that actually said that and the reason they said a V8 would be highly unlikely is for two reasons. The 2.7 liter EcoBoost they said does does the job really well, has a ton of low end torque, so there's no need for a V8. And secondly, they said it would be really hard to fit that in with the CAFE, C-A-F-E rules, so the government regulations. Now, what about when another company puts a V8 in your Bronco? So that would be Shelby. We've seen it on uh, Bronco Nation. They did some cross promotion, uh, you know, marketing team or, or the marketing team that's being paid by Ford did a video with Shelby saying, hey, want to do something with uh, the Bronco uh, to a Shelby. So guess what? We're getting a pretty unique engine. But what is it going to be? Well, let me tell you all about that. I'm Johnny from Johnny's Car Care and Reviews. This is your co-host and probably star of the show, Winston the Poodle. And you know what we're going to be covering today is pretty important to us, uh, to Winston too, because he loves the sound of a V8. Uh, he's pretty used to our 2018 Mustang GT. And I'm you ready? You ready? You ready to drive, Winston? Yeah? You want to go? You sure? You from us? And I'm pretty used to that sound as well. So I've been wondering all along when and if we're gonna get a V8 and a Bronco. And I'd say right now, it's 95% done. I'd say it's highly likely. So today we're gonna be discussing motors. We're gonna be discussing uh, the comments. You know, the, everyone's been commenting in the comments section about what engine could be showing up in that Shelby. And we've got some amazing comments from people that I wanna discuss today. Uh, put my you know two cents down and say what I think is most likely. And of course, uh, we're gonna be covering a few other surprise issues as we go through all of this, including a quick little drop and a quick little mention about the Webasto Hard Top Factory. Okay, so putting the pedal to the metal and jumping right in, let's look at what engine options we could be getting. Now, I didn't mention it in my first video on the subject, and that's why I'm going to mention it now, because the comments section always fills the whole discussion. We are a community. Uh, you know, I really hope that everyone has the same intention as I do, and that's to help our community out so that as a group, we can know as much as possible. Now, that does mean that when you leave a comment, of course, if uh, you know if you want to tell me that I got something wrong, please try to use uh, sources um, because you know I, I use sources uh, pretty much you know 99, 95% of the time. The other 5% of the time is insider rumors. So let's just jump right in. What do I think uh, is going to be the engine? One of the engines that were mentioned in the comments section because I had completely forgotten in my first video the possibility that Ford could use the Godzilla engine. That's a 7.3 liter gas engine that happens to be the same cubic inches as Ford's very famous because it was very unkillable uh, 7.3 liter diesel now this isn't the same engine however this is an engine that's going back to what you could say the good old v8 roots it's a push rod engine so that's kind of a old that is the old school manner design and fashion of building a, a v8 now this gas engine sounds huge and you could think i'm crazy for thinking it might end up in a Bronco, but it doesn't actually take up that much space. Uh, even though it's a big block engine, uh, and the fact that it's the fact that it's a push rod design is actually what makes it take up a whole lot less space than anyone could even imagine. Uh, you know, it was pointed out in the comments section that this takes up less space than a 5.2 liter V8 or a 5 liter V8. So in other words, it takes up less space than those high revving and when i say high revving ford's five liter and 5.2 liter engines um, are 7500 rpm plus machines so they're revving revs per minute of the engine um the five liters at 7500 rpm and then for the 5.2 well it's just all uphill from there with the variable camshaft timing, uh, it's it's really a modern V8. So th th this V8 uh, has plasma lining uh, p p pistons, uh, sorry, cylinders. Uh, what's more, it's both port injection and direct injection. So it's got two direct injections to make it a super modern engine. Uh, you're getting the best of both worlds because of that va variable 
cam timing uh, so you can have a vehicle a v8 that's actually very fuel efficient uh, you know i'm playing around 22 miles per gallon as an average uh, a lot of that actually is in town uh, to translate that that's about 11.8 liters per 100 kilometers and i do accelerate at every single light and every single stop sign because i love the sound of that five liter v8 so very modern engine will it end up in the bronco well we'll uh, discuss that as soon as we're done discussing the 7.3 liter engine I think the 7.3 liter engine in some form has a good chance of ending up in the Bronco because it's smaller than the 5 liter. Now, the Ford Ranger, the race Ford Ranger, already has trouble fitting a 3.5 liter EcoBoost into it. So that's in uh, the off-roader uh, race Ranger. They had actually had to widen the whole frame system. They had to widen the whole vehicle, not just the, like the outside proportions, but I mean like the actual frame proportions. They had to widen that to fit in a 3.5 liter EcoBoost. So fitting in a five liter, you know, how wide can they get this? How wide can Shelby get a Bronco? That's left to be discussed. Of course, I'd love to see a five liter with two turbos on it because then you could bring uh, some V8 EcoBoost technology. Maybe, you know, slowly convert some of the diehard V8 fans uh, and get them to try out uh, the twin turbo EcoBoost technology that Ford offers in the six cylinders. But for now, Shelby might go down the road of doing a 7.3 liter. And there's, you know, really good reasons why they might use the Godzilla engine, you know, First of all, it's RPM band. Uh, it does have a relatively low RPM cutoff. It's around 5,500 RPM, which is not typical of a Ford engine of the last decade. However, it does produce about 400 pound feet of torque at 4,000 RPM. So that's something that Ford does like. It goes in line and in tradition with all their EcoBoost engines that usually make 100% of their torque at only 3,000 RPM. So already the 7.3 has some characteristics that we know that both Ford and Shelby appreciate. So things that make this a real contender. First of all, it's 445 cubic inches. So Jeep has brought out a 392, 392 cubic inches. They're in competition. That is part of what could make us see a 7.3 liter Godzilla engine put into that Bronco. Now there's also its power stats. Now for the power stats, you know, in the F250 Super Duty, it's making 475 pound feet of torque at 4,000 RPM and what's more is it's making 430 horsepower so pretty very respectable horsepower numbers extremely respectable torque numbers and cubini gaming righteously pointed out that the bronco needs to beat jeep now i'd say they either need to beat them by just squashing them in horsepower and torque numbers or they need to beat them on you know what can be put on on as a sticker right onto the vehicle Wrangler's got the 392 and Cubini Gaming mentioned that it only makes sense that Ford goes with that bigger 445 cubic inch engine. They could also slap on a sticker and, you know, very simply put, even your, your most basic reader can tell that 445 is bigger than 392 and most people assume that bigger means better. Now, for the EcoBoost fans, we all know, know that's not uh, that's often not the case. However, there is a diehard V8 fan base out there and I think if we're talking about Shelby, which has always played with V8s, uh, other than a few exceptions in the 1980s where they played with uh, some four cylinders and some small cars, I'd say just the fact that Shelby's putting their hands on this makes us really think hard and long about considering the fact that it's very likely it'll be a V8 in that Shelby Bronco. So something that really stands out is 400 pound-feet of torque for the Godzilla engine at only 4,000 RPM and we, we, we know Ford and Shelby both have a common theme. They both love high torque engines at low RPM. You know when you slap on a supercharger or when you slap turbos on something that's what happens. You get all sorts of power at low end and that's what's really important for off-roading. It's not so much horsepower. It's not a horsepower race. It's a torque race and how much how many pound feet of torque at how low of an RPM, a revolution per minute of the engine. Now Don 
po sorry, and I'm sorry if I'm saying this wrong, but Dan user po Dan Pothast or Pothast, you got it spot on. King of Off Road or you know K O R Core would be an awesome acronym or awesome name for a Shelby Bronco. So thanks for pointing that out. That was really cool to read. Uh, M Peugeot mentioned as a name the Bronco Boss 302. I think that would be extremely winner. You know that would be radical, and I think it would be awesome also if if they do go with the five liter, if they throw on two turbos. You know make it an EcoBoost Shelby. That means Shelby would be be you know brought into the whole EcoBoost family and the Bronco would be brought to a V8 because this way you know Ford in 2020 made it clear you can't with the cafe rules higher you know smog emissions and all this it's awfully tough to put a V8 uh, justify putting a V8 into the Bronco but if Shelby does it well it's on their averages and you know whether they buy credits carbon credits or however they work it out. Maybe they'll come out with an all electric vehicle to help balance out their, their fleet average. That's that's for another discussion another day. Let's just get back some of the really good uh, comments that were left and discuss them a little. We got uh, Joshua Berryman who pointed out that the Godzilla, Godzilla engine has made over 600 horsepower faithfully when tuned. So the fact that it can make 600 horsepower, depending what price Shelby's gonna ask for this Bronco, uh, I think the fact that the 7.3 liter Godzilla can take that kind of tuning and not have issues makes it a real contender. Now, Edgar Taylor pointed out that the 6.8 liter, um, you know, like the Raptor is gonna be getting, the Raptor previously had an EcoBoost, 3.5 liter EcoBoost in it, uh, but for 2022, it's getting a 6.8 liter. And you know, it makes a lot of sense that he pointed out that Shelby could be getting this 6.8 liter. However, here's the thing. If Ford makes a Raptor, if Ford makes a Raptor, I'd say they're going to use one of two engines. They're either going to use the 6.8 liter, and if so, it only makes sense that Shelby uses the 7.3 liter. However, if the Bronco Raptor that Ford will produce as a, a special edition, if it uses a 3.5 liter EcoBoost, well then, I'd say there's good chances that Shelby actually ends up using a 6.8 liter. And remember the 6.8 liter is, it's derived from the 7.3 liter. It's basically the same engine, just, you know, bored down, I think is the term. It's made to be a little smaller now. 7.3 liter doesn't evoke as much emotion and love as a, as a 6.8 because remember, you know, 7.3 liters have been around at four. They're around in the 2000s and those are beloved engines, unkillable engines. And you know, they're still even on the used market with hundreds of thousands of miles, they're still worth something. So they're great engines. So I think it'd be in Shelby's benefit to use the 7.3 liter for us a marketing from a uh, marketing standpoint and a reason to think that the Raptor might actually get a 3.5 liter power boost not eco boost but power boost is because we have seen previously a uh, covered up Raptor that was higher and wider looked like it ran at times on 37s and at other times on 35s um, it did have a power cable, an orange power cable underneath. So I'd say the Raptor, uh, definitely they're toying with the idea of putting a 3.5 liter power boost in it. Had that been a regular sized Bronco, I would have thought that, you know, Ford, outside of the whole R Raptor SVT branding, was thinking of giving us a nice little uh, power boost, 3.5 liter power boost option, which would be incredible because we are talking 570 pound feet of torque at 3000 RPM and 500 horsepower. This is a top contender. But remember Ford and remember community, a lot of us want a V8 sound out of our Bronco. You know, this is a heritage uh, model. You know, it's going back to what people grew up using in the woods or high speed desert, racing it, it goes back all the way to the 60s and a lot of people had broncos with v8s in them and a lot of people just want that sound you know i know that the eco boost is the two even the 2.7 liter that i'm going to be getting is more than enough it's a fantastic engine but i'm gonna if i sell the 2018 mustang i'm going to miss the v8 sound so i'm still gonna you know once in a while get into one of the two mustangs whichever one i end up keeping and going for a nice little drive just so i can have v8 sound I had V8 sound out of the Bronco, well then I'd have everything. I'd have my summer, winter vehicle. I'd only need a Bronco. But let's think about what other engines could be there, could be in that Bronco. 
So a little talk about the Webasso potential second factory. Now I already did a full video on this saying, don't get your hopes up. This isn't gonna resolve anything for this year, for 2021 model years. And I did say that, you know, this was a bit of insider information, but that if it does happen, it would likely take, you know, about six months before really anything is going on over at that second factory. Um, now, of course, I do really appreciate the comment section. It's always great when possible, when all of us try to source our information. Um, but I was being told like, hey, this wouldn't be online until 2023. Um, but now, you know, I was uh, four or five days early, you could say, or maybe a, about a week early because now, now, uh, Ford Authority has come out saying that, you know, qu quoting Wabasso and Ford saying that if the second factory does go ahead to try to resolve the issue, that it's going to be something that will help out production for 2022. So I think my six months is about correct, you know, six to eight months, depending how fast they sign that contract for a second factory. So just want to point out when possible, please use sources in the comments section uh, when possible, especially if you're, you know, if you need to tell me I'm wrong, great. I, I love knowing when I'm wrong, but I love having facts provided to know exactly if I'm wrong. And, you know, that's what's helpful for the community. It's to actually know, you know, what are the facts? And that's what I would consider helpful information. So we need to work with facts uh, whenever possible. So just to recap, very clearly, the soft top issue, you know, should you take a soft top and is it the solution to getting your Bronco sooner? Yes, it is the solution to get your Bronco sooner. The hard top factory is a big if. So a second Webasto hard top factory is a potential solution. Nothing's confirmed yet. It might happen. And if it does happen, it's going to help, you know, get more hard tops out there in six to eight months and you know even if they do have a second factory you know let's say it's as productive or even twice as productive as the main Webasso factory uh, let's say they can do 200 a day well even if they can do 200 a day a lot of the issue going on with the main Webasso factory is that they've got you know critical components coming in from Italy and China two places that were hit extremely hard by uh, COVID so it's not, it, it will speed things up, but it's not gonna be a miracle solution. The near miracle solution is actually the soft top, but I'm gonna get more into that in another video where I'll fully cover, you know, quickly the whole uh, second factory issue and what you can do as a soft top solution. I'll try to say it all in six minutes. Um, but for now, let's just get right back to those engines so that this video isn't too long for you. So back to the topic at hand the five liter V8. Is that gonna be what's gonna be in a Shelby? I highly doubt it. Already as it is the Ford Ranger platform, uh, which is the one being used in the Bronco, uh, the Ford Ranger platform is at 77.8 inches in width, excluding those mirrors. Now, of course, the Bronco, they don't wanna tell us how wide it is excluding those mirrors, but they do say with the mirrors folded, the Badlands comes in at 76.3 inches, and the Wild Track comes in at 79.3 inches with the mirrors folded. So, Essentially, we've got a vehicle that's the same width as the Ranger, and to cram just a 3.5 liter EcoBoost engine into the Ranger, well, they have. They have for uh, the race ver version for the uh, for the thousand uh, ba Baja races or Baja, pro more properly pronounced. Um, they've got to widen that that frame, the whole the whole track. So. What's going to be going down? Well, it would be evident to think it's a whole lot easier to fit a V8 5 liter into a Bronco, and that's what Shelby will offer us because, well, it's easier. Uh, but, you know, sometimes Ford doesn't go the easiest route. They often go the crowd pleaser as they're doing with this one. So what I think the Shelby is really going to be, the Shelby Bronco, who knows what name they're going to give it. I'm hoping they give it a name with some numbers, uh, as Shelby always has, you know, with 350s, 500s. So I'd love to hear what you think in the comments section, what name uh, they might use. Do you think maybe Ford is going to go down the road of calling their Bron their special edition Bronco a Raptor, whereas Shelby is going to get to use the Warthog name and maybe throw some letters at the end of it the way they do for uh, the, the bomber jets? 
let me know in the comment section. I'd love to hear your opinion. And I think, you know, it'd be nice to have a little discussion going in on this. So is it going to be a five liter? Well, I highly doubt it for one really great reason. Uh, in the takeoff video, when they're taking off on racetrack down, it's straight. They get to that first corner and well, you know what? The, the, the predator Shelby GT 500 is only slightly ahead. Now, of course, the Bronco does have the advantage of having four by four on takeoff. And really, what speed are they, are they going once they get into that front corner? Well, maybe someone who's actually raced on this racetrack can let us know, you know, what corner one, what speed should you be going in a GT500 would help us figure out what's the likelihood of uh, getting that exact same engine. Uh, because it could be the 5.2 liter Predator engine we're going to going to get but I also kind of doubt that because a 5.2 liter Predator has a supercharger and you know at that point we're really starting to get uh, to playing around in the space the space in that engine bay because a 2.7 liter uh, fits pretty snug into the Bronco engine bay so is it a 5.2 liter supercharge I'm thinking it's less likely and is it a 5.2 liter without the supercharge so is it the voodoo engine i'd say that's probably our likeliest bet i, I i'd put my money i'd put you know my five dollars uh, my five dollar bet you could say on that i think it's going to be a 5.2 liter with no supercharger heck you, you don't what are you going to do with 776 horsepower uh in in a Bronco. Now the 5.2 liter is definitely an amazing engine. Uh, whether it has a supercharger or not, I'd love to hear. Let me know in the comments section. Let's let's get a discussion going on with which V8 engine you think it's going to be. And if you think I'm completely wrong and you think, you know, Shelby's going to be doing a 3.5 liter EcoBoost, let us know. That EcoBoost engine, you know, to keep in mind in an F-150 without uh, the electric engine. Uh, so as a power boost, that's a 3.5 liter EcoBoost with electric engine, it's making 570 pound feet of torque and 430 horsepower. Now the 3.5 liter EcoBoost is making 400 horsepower and 500 pound feet of torque. So in no way is this a bad engine. And keep in mind, this is the engine used in the Ford GT. You know, that's the, the Ferrari competitor and uh, at times the Ferrari beater. So that it, the 3.5 liter is an incredible engine. If we get it, uh, I'm not going to be swearing off Ford and say Ford never again. I'm out. I'm out. I'm out. No, I'm not going to be out on Ford. I think the 3.5 liter is a great engine, but what I want is sound. Um, you know, the, the power boost or the eco boost engines are incredible in regards to their low end torque. They're actually pretty unbeatable. Uh, it's pretty hard to find a V8 and you just don't find a V8 with more low end torque. You know, they're making 100% of the torque at 3000 RPM. That's incredible. But I'd love a V8 with a supercharger. How, how could they ever fit a supercharger in that engine bay? Well, though, I think the possible solution would be to go with a five liter, but to supercharge that five liter. So really our four V8 options are gonna be either a straight five liter, I doubt that. A 5.2 liter, I think that's very likely. A 5.2 liter with supercharger, I'm starting to think that there's a whole lot of issues in regards to space in that engine bay. So I'd say that's pretty unlikely in my opinion, or a five liter with supercharger. And I'd say the 5.2 liter, no supercharger is more likely, but boy, would I ever love to see a five liter with a supercharger. Now the video didn't help us out uh, because when the Bronco does go down that hill, uh, they deliberately muted the sound of the Bronco. Now, of course, in filming, you know, they have the excuse of, well, the Bronco was being shot from further away. And it actually, the Bronco cuts cuts the corner and is cutting quite a, quite a ways away from the camera. Then, of course, right after, we hear the incredible sound of the 5.2 liter Predator engine of the GT500. And the sound is amazing. But what I'm finding is that the cutaway sound of the Bronco, before they allow the Shelby sound to come into the video, the cutaway sound of that Bronco, in my opinion, you can tell, I, I think that's the sound of a 5.2 liter. Um, and of course, because it was too far away to hear anything other than a, a little bit of engine noise. So I couldn't hear if that had a supercharger on it. I'm going to continue 
listening to that video and uh, I'm going to put on my earphones to really, you know, really try to figure out more. That'll be coming up in future videos and hey, maybe by then Ford will be telling us what engine we're going to be getting. I kind of doubt it. Uh, I think it's going to be a while before we find out the engine because I think this is going to be something that's going to arrive in late spring early summer. Ford seems to give us really amazing news in July and uh, hopefully we don't get any bad news in December saying it's delayed, but I think probably in around October, November, we're going to find out when exactly we're going to be getting this. I'm, I'd put my money on mid-spring the earliest. I think it's going to be a mid-spring to late spring arrival for something that we can definitely get into the dealerships and our hands on come summer. However, of course, what we've seen with the Bronco is things seem to sell out fast. So, you know, I'm going to keep you informed so that you can put a deposit on this as soon as you can put a deposit on it. So I hope this video has been helpful. Please, if it has been helpful, like and subscri subscribe. It helps to feed it for more Ford, more Bronco, and really just more helpful automobile information. Have a great week. I wish you all more cars and more power. And I really do hope that you get to put the pedal to the metal. Mustang ride? Do you want to go for a Mustang ride? Yeah, you're gone? Gonna go for a Mustang ride without me? Okay. <laughs> you ready for your Mustang ride, Winston? Yeah, top down. Yeah, let's get going, eh? You ready? You ready? You ready to drive, Winston? Yeah? You wanna go? You sure? You prefer a Mustang ride or a walk? You wanna walk? You wanna walk? Or do you want a Mustang ride? Which one? You pick. Mustang ride or a walk? Can we go for a Mustang ride then? More than a walk? Yeah? You pick. It's hard to pick, eh? It's hard to pick, it's hard to pick. Okay, let's go for the ride. Okay. Okay, let's go for a ride.